doing front brakes on a Toyota, a Toyota Avalon with a 3.0 liter. But this will also work for your uh, Camrys, your Siennas, your Lexus ES300s, your LS400s, and your SC300s. But I'll put a link in the description below of, uh, not a link, but I'll go ahead and put a list of all the vehicles it actually covers. I'm just doing, I'm going to do one side. I'm going to do the um, passenger side. I've already done the driver's side. This is not hard at all. Really not hard. Just make sure you get quality um, brake pads. I have Bosch QuietCast uh, pads. Brake pads. Part number is BC476. Then I have Bosch QuietCast uh, brake rotors. Part number is 5001221. These things are awesome. I've had really good luck with these. With these uh, rotors and shoes. Hi. Probably the best uh, best setup I've seen in a long, long time. One thing that's cool about Bosch QuietCast uh, rotors is the fact that there is no oil on these. You can you can install these without having to use a brake cleaner on them. Most manufacturers, when they ship rotors, will put a light coating of oil on it so it doesn't rust. But Bosch has a special coating that's already on there that uh, prevents it from rusting. So you don't need to uh, use brake cleaner before uh, installing the pads. Also, the pads come with um, new hardware. They, have new, uh, they do have new hardware. It's over there. And they also come with the grease that you need if you don't have grease. So that's one thing cool about the Bosch setup. It comes with the hardware and the grease you need for your caliper slide pins. Some guys put grease all back here or glue or whatever they want to use. It didn't come from the factory that way, so I don't ever put anything on the back shim here. You guys can leave comments. Whether you like to leave or put gunk on the back, I just see it as a point of build up for dirt and debris and brake dust, so I never put anything back there. If your kit doesn't come with um, synthetic brake component lubricant, I've had really good luck with Permatex Silicone Ceramic Extreme Brake Parts Lubricant. Part number is 80653. I'll put a link in the description below to where you can buy this on Amazon, but this stuff is... Uh, what I've used the most and had really good luck with. It's like orange in appearance. Good stuff right there. Here are the tools you need. You need a 17mm uh, wrench, 14mm wrench, you need a hammer, you need a torque wrench that goes up to 100 foot-pounds. Uh, got a 17mm uh, 3 8 socket here. Have a C-clamp here to push the uh, piston back into the caliper. 6 inch C-clamp. Yep, and then have my Milwaukee gun to get the lug nuts off. You don't need this. You can use um, one of those star wrenches that you use for lug nuts, but uh, this comes in handy. This has been um, this has been one of the best purchases I've ever made. Didn't think I needed it, but once you have it, it's really nice. Okay, so this rotor right here on some Honda Acura applications. You have a, um, some screws, two screws typically that sit inside the rotor that you have to actually uh, get loose before the rotor will come out. This vehicle does not have this. These two holes right here that you see, if this rotor gets uh, stuck on the hub assembly, you can take, um, I'll put a picture of it right now, but uh, of the specific bolt that you need. But you can drive a bolt down there, tighten them up one by one, you know, you tighten this one, tighten that one, tighten this one and you can slowly push the rotor out. Or you can get a hammer, hit the rotor, but uh, that's what those two holes are for. Right here on the back side of the uh, caliper, you have a 14 millimeter bolt here, you have one right down there. This connects into your slide pins that you need to lube up. There's one here, one right there. And uh, then you need to take these bolts out, which are 17 millimeter. Hopefully you guys can see that, where my finger's at right there. There's one here and then right below it. 17 millimeter which releases the brake caliper bracket so you can get the rotor loose you don't have to change out the rotors and I'll put a link to a video I did about resurfacing rotors sometimes you can save them uh, but the owner opted just to get new brake pads new rotors to get these out these 17 millimeter they're usually in there you need to torque these down to about 80 to 100 foot pounds to get them out I'll usually just uh, use a hammer and a wrench, which I'll show you here in a second how I do that. And these should come out fairly easy. If these start spinning on you, you have a nut right here. 
where my finger is. If these, if you start uh, loosening up this bolt, this 14 millimeter bolt, and this starts spinning on you, get another wrench and hold this while you spin this one loose. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna take these 14 millimeter caliper bolts out. Like I said they should come right out, which they are. Once you have these out, you'll be able to get this caliper out of the way and get to the brake pads. Place this up out of the way. Don't let it hang. Right here you have two springs that go into the brake pads that keep the brake pads separated and doesn't drag, doesn't allow them to drag on the rotor. So we get those out of the way. Pull the old brake pads out. Okay. We're gonna get the caliper brake the brake caliper bracket bolts loose. And then, like I said, to do this, I just get my wrench on, get my hammer. And I'm just tapping it with my hammer right here onto the wrench. So it can be in there super tight, super tight. right off. I've seen guys on the hub assembly right here, they'll take a take a grinder, clean up this metal, put some uh, anti-seize on there. I typically don't do that. Uh, we're here in California. I'm here in California. We don't see a lot of rust. We actually don't see a lot of rain like the rest of the country does, which is pretty sad. I wish we did. We're always in a drought. But uh, if you guys, I guess if you lived in a rust belt or by the ocean, and you see uh, rust on your car, I would go ahead and clean that up with a steel wool brush or like a little grinder and then put some anti-seize in there for, to stop the rotor from getting uh, stuck on there. Okay, so we have the brake caliper bracket off. It's right here. Right here are your two pins. These slide back and forth. It's a floating caliper. So you need these pins to be able to move freely. And uh, right now these pins aren't moving freely. So let me see if I can get a wrench. And break them loose. Okay, maybe 17 ish. Got a 15. Nope. Too small. 17. Okay, 17 is good. Now it's a matter of trying to get them out. Okay, so they're not we're totally stuck in there. Okay, so I'm just taking the head right here, going behind it, trying not to rip this rubber boot, and just free it that way. One of these is going to have a rubber, a rubber, uh, oh, what do you call it? Not a rubber cap, but there's going to be a piece of rubber on the uh, end of this slide pin bolt, and that gets seized. See, it's right there. Some guys, if they don't use the right grease on here, they just slap axle grease, swells this rubber up. It's already swollen, I can feel it. I can feel the ridge right here. It just swells up this rubber, so. Whether it's swollen or not, I always cut these off. I have a video about that very issue. You guys are like, no, it's put there by engineers. You can't do that. You're gonna get all kinds of weird noises. It's not gonna center correctly. Shut up. So if it was made by engineers, it's supposed to be there. Why is it, on, why is it only on one caliper slide pin? See, I'll pull this one off, and it won't be there. So explain to me that, that situation, huh? See? No rubber. So if it's so important, why isn't it on both of them? Hmm? Hmm? Leave a comment below. Okay, we got the brake cleaner. 
Just bring it down there. Fill it up. From my handy dandy pencil. I wish I had a brush small enough. I'm trying to scrape a little grease and get it up and out. Okay, turn it over. Get some of the stuff out. We're also going to replace this hardware right here. It comes with new hardware. You just need to note which one's top, which one's bottom, and then put uh, put the uh, Permatex uh, ceramic brake parts lubricant on it as well. So we can actually pop those off right now. One, two. Three, four. Okay. Well, that's kind of drying. Well, this is drying on the inside. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna install the new hardware. So just remember which one went where. The top and the bottom clips are different. You can see it has this extra spring where the bottom ones don't. So just remember where you got the where, which side the clips came out of. Sometimes the kits don't come with new hardware, so if they don't, just clean up the old hardware as best as can, as best as you can. Get some part parts, get some brake parts cleaner. Get a toothbrush and a rag and just clean it up as well as you can. Time for the grease. Permatex. I'll put a link where you guys can pick this up on Amazon. Good stuff. I've seen Napa carry this stuff as well. So I'll go ahead and get my, just put my finger down here. Coat the pin. That's all you gotta do. Put it back down in. Make sure it's sliding really nice and easily. Twist it up and down as well. Get the other pin. Lube that up. I cut off the rubber. I know some guys are gonna leave crap comments about me cutting that off. Oh, engineers put it there for a reason. The engineers. <laughs> yeah, well, engineers always don't know what they're doing. Just look at the Ford 6.0 liter. That's a pile of junk. So if this rubber is getting air stuck in there, just pull it up and over. And make a little crease. To let the air escape, and then push it down. There you go. Moving real nice, real nice in there now. One thing you do not want to do is you don't want to get this stuff on the new rotor, so just be careful. All right, another point of uh, point of protection that you need to put the uh, Permatex on is the slide pins, or not the slide pins, the contact points for the brake pad. So I just take some, rub my finger, put it onto the new hardware top. Can I do the bottom, or this is actually the top? Coat it real nice. This allows the pads to slide back and forth. Most guys don't take the time to do this for what I'm doing and showing you. Most shops will ignore this step altogether. <laughs> because the faster they get the job done, the more money they make. Okay, so this is get, this is ready to go back in. Put grease here, 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 here. Did the slide pins, which are moving a lot easier now. And we're good to go. Okay, don't get your grimy paws on the new on the new rotor, especially the braking surface. Okay, now the rotor just sitting right there. I like to go ahead and take a lug nut on the bottom drive it down which holds the rotor in place which makes everything easier to install all right so that's not going anywhere the rotor is not going anywhere found my bolts bring that back into place like I said earlier you're gonna want to torque these down to about 80 to 100 foot pounds just gotta move the 
caliper bracket around a little bit to have everything line up correctly. Okay, bring in my torque wrench, set to 100 foot pounds. There's one. Two hundred foot pounds on those brake caliper bracket bolts. You do not want those going anywhere. Bring in the new pads. They just slide into place. Don't get your grimy, greasy, dirty paws all over the brake caliper surface or the brake pad surface. There's two. Bring in your springs. Don't leave these out. There's two. I forgot to push back the piston inside the brake caliper. So I'll do that right now. So bring your caliper piston back up. Here's the brake caliper piston. Here are the two pistons. Here's your brake caliper. You need to push this back in. So get yourself an old, uh, one of the old brake pads. And I get a six inch C-clamp. And you just slowly compress this, the piston. And you have to go back and forth to get this to collapse right since there's two pistons. This is slowly but surely. Close it up. Okay, gonna go to the other side. One thing you want to do before you take off in your car for the first time before, after doing this job is make sure you press before you start the vehicle at all, press the brake pedal 10 times so that these pistons actually will come back out and make contact with the new brake pads. Or you'll have no brakes when you go down the road the first time. The reason you're doing this is that there's more meat on the new brake pads than the old ones and you need to make room for that, uh, for that new material. Okay, bring your brake caliper. Boom shakalaka. Everything line up on the bolt okay there you go there is no I mean, there's I'm sure there is a torque spec for this bolt right here but uh, the two bolts I just do it snug the key one to remember is the one for the uh, bracket itself brake caliper bracket you need to do that to 90 to 100 pounds more close closer to 100 just do 100 foot pounds on that I won't bore you with putting the wheel back on but I will took torque the lug nuts down to 80 foot pounds. This is just a trick I learned a long, long time ago to keep the rotor in place while you're installing everything. Don't get your dirty paws on the rotor or the surface of the brake pads either. So, if you guys have found this video helpful, please subscribe to Bundy's Garage on YouTube. Questions, comments, concerns, you can always reach out to me at bundysgarage at gmail.com. And like always, I'll keep them rolling for you.